name is Sam Jenks, and welcome to another episode of The Way We Source, a podcast hosted by Kodiak Hub, where we share our talks with procurement practitioners, leaders, experts, consultants, content gurus, and people that we find downright inspiring, diving into the role that sourcing and procurement plays in the way that we live. If you like today's episode, as always, make sure to rate the program and give us a follow. Today, we're welcoming a technology enthusiast like myself. He's an expert in IT and software procurement, diving into what it really takes for modern procurement teams to acquire, apply, and adopt new technology, and also the importance of having experienced IT and tech category leads when doing so. Our guest is a practitioner who brings with him 10 plus years of experience in procurement from global brands such as Adidas and Sanofi. He's currently the head of procurement at Monks. We're very pleased to welcome Constantine Kome. Constantine, welcome to the show. Hey, Sam. Thank you for having me. And I hope that Konke was a okay pronunciation of your last name. It is. It is. All right. Good. One point for Gryffindor. Um, I want to start with a question that we ask a lot of our guests, Constantine. What exactly does sourcing and procurement mean to you? Oh, you go. You go straight with the with the hot questions. <laughs> Very no, philosophical. I mean, yeah, no, but it's. Uh, I think overall it's a great question because I think a lot of companies are not really sure what to do with procurement still, even though you know we've been in in the field for I don't know at least ten ten for me, but twenty, thirty, forty for others. But I mean, yeah, from my limited experience, I would say for me it's really trying to provide the tools for everyone to do their jobs should be as simple as this um yeah yeah i think it's the rest is you know do do more with your budget uh, try to optimize prevent the risk but i think overall is just hey we're there to provide the tool for a company to do this work yeah definitely so and i think being an enabler is, is so important in procurement and you're in such a good place to be able to do so as we've talked about on a lot of episodes right in that sweet spot between buyer or I'm sorry, so, uh, internal stakeholder that needs to buy and supplier who needs to sell, right? And, yeah. and you're yeah, facilitating exactly. all the time. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you're kind of the kind of the entry gate for for all of these. And I mean, I mean, you you know it as well. In procurement, is also a very commercial function. Mm. Very much so. Do you mind if we actually double click on that on that item? Because mm -hmm. you know, we we talk with a lot of our guests about the skills that are required in procurement. How much do you think of the role as commercial, and how much of it do you think is soft skills? I would say close to 80% soft skills, commercial, commercial approach, because I would say there is a way that you have to sell the function internally. Uh, you have to show your success stories. You have to show what you're doing. You have to show your successes, where you add value, definitely. Because as I was saying, I think a lot of companies are not really sure what to do with procurement still. Right. Um, and you also have to you know, um, uh, cultivate relationship with suppliers, uh, with you know startups or you know small companies, um, so there is definitely you know a, a huge aspect which I think it's soft skills. The hard skills in 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 a way are are very easy to acquire. It's mostly you know negotiate contracts, pricing, know how to do you know uh, total cost of ownership study. So it's it's I would say it's very easy to acquire, but most of it I think it's really commercial and people skills. Yeah. I know that you actually, you, you, we mentioned offline, started your career in, in sales. What, what do you think yeah. that those years actually taught you about selling to buyers? Um, I think the first thing is that it made me discover procurement. Uh, because okay. before that, I have absolutely no idea what it was. Uh, <laughs> right. I mean, you know that you know people are buying you know office supplies, all of this, but I didn't know that it was an actual an actual job, an actual function. Um, but when you are on the other side, I think you also see you know the complexities of what selling actually is, especially from a big companies, because you know um, a salesman or a saleswoman is is not alone. You know there is a lot of you know there is marketing, legal, uh, accounting, all of that behind. So right. I think for me specifically, it really helped me to sh to see see you know, both sides of the coin and say, hey, you know, a salesman is not there to try to sell you the highest thing at the highest price. There is a lot of things behind it. And when, when you're able to see both sides, I think it's, again, you know, it's a commercial function. So I think it, may, it helps you understand where the other one is coming from. And I think it's, it's just all the better for it for the relationship. Yeah. Do you think that those years made you a better buyer? And if so, how? I hope so. 
Um, <laughs> I do. I do hope so. Um, but then again, I think it's it's really you know try to to understand how how an offer is being set up. Where are you know the the things that you know you can negotiate, the one that you cannot negotiate. Um, you know, we can see in software procurement, um, for example, terminating a contract in advance is is never possible. Um, and and when you are on the other side, you understand. You know, you understand that there are you know investments on hardware, on infrastructure, on marketing. Right. That you know some things cannot be terminated that easily. So when you're on, when you see both sides, I think it's it helps you also selling this offer internally as well. Interesting. So then, I guess the 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 big question: Do you feel like you chose the role, or did the role choose you? And also, kind of, why did you choose to transition into procurement? Maybe if there's others that are out there looking to get inspired by your journey. Uh, I think I think I definitely chose the role. Um, I, I even I even done another degree for it, so it's it's really really you know conscious choice. But as I was saying, I didn't know the role before. Um, and my my first role in sales in, in credit insurance um, is, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a very specific type of insurance that you have for companies where um, you the company I was part of was basically covering the unpaid uh, transaction from suppliers. So for example, you know, you're buying some computers from India, those are not getting delivered for whatever reason. Uh, so my company was actually reimbursing you for that lost money and then magic to get the money back from from the from the supplier. Uh, and then what my day to day job was, was actually to answer questions from procurement people to say, hey, we're trying to get in business with that supplier. Do you have a credit report? Do you have credit history with them? And then most of my job was actually trying to understand where the question was coming from. And I thought, hey, right. it's actually quite a fun job because, you know, I, I work with a lot of companies, some of them were, you know, buying, trying to buy some grain from South Africa, somewhere was trying to buy chemical products, uh, could be, could be anything. I say, hey, it's kind of a fun job because you have a lot of issues, a lot of different problematics, and it, it could be everywhere in the world. So I said, yeah, it sounds to be kind of a, a an interesting job with a lot of different way of approaching it. So I thought, hey, and to be very transparent, and especially with our audience, it's kind of a hot market for procurement professionals. You know, it's it's always in demand. So, you know, um, at the time, you know, it was not far after the 20, 2008 crisis. So, you know, finding a job for young people was hard. I thought, hey, procurement seems interesting and there is a job into it. So why not? Yeah. And I mean, that's that's something to remember. And for young talent, something that's inspiring as well. It is a top, top time for, for procurement. I think we we have entered in kind of a new era in a lot of ways. Um, what, when, when you look at like where procurement is at today, why do you think that it's hot? You know, what is its what is its how has its star risen in, in, in global organizations like the ones that you've been in? That's an interesting, interesting question. I think. I think overall, I think it really depends on the company itself, uh, really sure. on the maturity of the company itself. But I, 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 I think that for at least the bigger group I've been into, I think procurement show is, showed its value, I think, first, and not always for savings, I would say, but most of it for spend analysis and spend control, just to make sure that, and, you know, I mean, it's, it's not a secret for anyone that, you know, profitability on the stock market is the key metric today. And so, you know, procurement is really there to help on the bottom line uh, as well. So in some company can be the top line, but most of it is, is the bottom line. And when I think, you know, top leadership or C-suites understand that, you know, this is really, uh, and speaking just for procurement, not really supply chain, but procurement alone, to say, hey, you know, they're there to try to control the spend we have so that, you know, we can really do something with the bottom line. I think that's where, you know, especially for sizable spend, uh, I mean, the effects of procurement can be can be massive. Mm. Good insights. Okay, let's shift to your career path. Mm -hmm. You, uh, when we mentioned, when we talked offline, mentioned something that I it stuck with me. You said, because you've been at Sanofi and you've been at uh, Adidas. Yeah. I don't know why yeah. I said it Adidas in, in my intro, like I was in the UK or something. Uh, I'm very American. Anyways, uh, Sanofi, you mentioned, uh, people know the products, but not the brand. Whereas Ad Adidas, I'm, I'm, I'm saying it again, Adidas, <laughs> people know the brand, not the product. Yeah. Uh, or, so, 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 I mean, how do you think that this can sometimes impact culture in an organization? And also, how do you think that this impacts sometimes procurement? 
I think, I mean, from the way I saw it, um, I think, I mean, first of all, there is one thing I think it might be very pragmatic in this, but if you, if for Sanofi, if you know the product, that means that you have medical issues and it's never fun. So I think right. hopefully people are in good shape so they don't really know the product uh, or, or they don't have to, which, which I think is, 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 is a good thing. Uh, and I think at Sanofi, people were very proud to participate into the overall goal of the company, which is help the patient. I think at Adidas, and it's something that is very much on the first day you see it, is that you are bringing, you are being brought into the brand. And I mean, if you're, if you're lucky enough to go to the campus in, in Germany, even before you reached, you know, the reception desk, you see the product. And the whole brand around this, I think it's, it's and even for me, you know, I'm, I, I uh, for example, I'm, I run a lot. Mm-hmm. And even after leaving Adidas for what, a year and a half? I mean, it's like, yeah, I should wear Adidas, not Nike. And it's kind of, it's there, you know, it's, it's, uh, and it's four years in there where they say, hey, this is the brand and you're part of the brand and you're representing the brand, which I yeah. think it's, 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 I mean, it's unconscious, but it's very, very strong. And I think for, for procurement, it's not that impacting but i know that you know in terms of the of the negotiations you have with suppliers the power of the brand is extremely strong as well and what right. i mean by that is when we did rfp for adidas all of our suppliers were coming in in adidas gear all of them whereas those same suppliers a few years later at sanofi were coming in suit ties and everything but because yeah. it was Adidas, it was like polo shirts or jersey of a German team and everything. So the, it kind of translate and transfer to the to the to the supply to the suppliers as well. And I think overall, just on the negotiation power, I think having that kind of logo as part of the customer base is also something very powerful for the suppliers. So pragmatically, I would say it also helped me in in some negotiations because you can sell you can sell the logo basically. Yeah, I, w- I was curious because I mean, obviously, we're, we're, as a, as a growth venture ourselves in the procure tech space, um, you know, selling technology to procurement professionals for procurement professionals as we are, and 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 I'm sure that you you know we'll we'll touch upon procure tech as a topic mm-hmm. today, but it, it, it is interesting to see sometimes when when companies throw around their brand, you know, in a negotiation, uh, we'll we'll help you, you know, we'll. we'll you know, it's kind of that give and take. Well, we'll be a customer reference, or you can utilize yeah. our, our logo type in, in marketing or you know investor relation assets. And when is it the right time to throw around the logo or the brand? When is it the wrong time? Do you think? I mean, the question is, can you throw the logo in there? Mm. Well, uh, yeah, because sure. I know that I know that, for example, Adidas was very very protective of that. Okay. Um, and it was only given to some suppliers to have the right to put the logo in there, to have the right to put, you know, a customer reference or a, a client reference in there. Right. Um, so it's, it's um, but I know that even if it's not on the, um, on the, on the website, I know for a fact that, you know, suppliers are saying, Hey, you know, Adidas is one of our main customers as well. So it's, it's, it's always a, a selling argument. So it's, it's, I think it's it's always part of the negotiation, um, but I know also that a lot of brands are actually very very protective of that. Yeah, and and as they should be as well, right? Yeah. Okay, uh, let's talk a little bit about technology. I mean, you're a technology buyer. You have been mm-hmm. for a long time, um, both software, hardware. I mean, you've done it all the full spectrum. Yeah. Um, if we double down though on on the actual topic of procure tech right as a technology mm-hmm. category technology to be to be bought by procurement to be used by procurement which yeah. which is one of one, one of the more interesting dichotomies of procure tech right um and we're the geniuses that have chosen to be in in the in the in the category where we're selling to professional negotiators right <laughs> no but all jokes aside um do you think that procurement pros have a harder time or an easier time buying technology when they're also the user profile Mm, I think um, I think one thing is that the good thing is that procurement knows the process. So right. you know we know what's going on. We know how to deal with this. We know you know negotiations, legal, accounting, all of that, approvals, the, the whole thing, um, which I think helps us a bit. But I also think that we have the same problem that everyone else that we don't know what we want. Is that if you tell me, hey, what would be your ideal solution for your procurement? I have no idea. I 
I can tell you, hey, that works, that doesn't work. So I think in a way, and I mean, I'm pretty sure you've seen this, um, is when you have project coming up your way and you're asking your stakeholders, hey, what do you actually need? They don't really know. They say, hey, we need something like this, but not necessarily this. So I think procurement has exactly the same pitfall that everyone else is that, yeah, okay, you know, and that might be a bit harder for you that, you know, you're selling to the negotiators, but in, in, in the end, it needs to be the right product. Um, yeah. So I think, and that's where we have exactly the same problem than everyone else. So, so where do you think, how do you think that procurement can be better than at understanding what it is that they want, getting down to the core of it then before they go out to market and buy technology? Is there, is there modes of operating you would propose? I think it, it's, it's exactly what we do with our stakeholders is say, hey, guys, let's sit around the table and actually think about, about what we actually want is, you know, yeah. what kind of uh, functionalities we want. Uh, and if, you know, if we're doing an RFP with, with tools, this is, you know, what kind of functions do, do this offer? What is the nice to have? What is the must have? What do we absolutely need? What don't we need? Uh, what connections do we need with our, you know, ERP, P2P system, the whole thing. Um, so I think it's, you know, just following that, that process that we maybe not force, but I think encourage our stakeholders to follow. Yeah. We should do the same ourselves. You know, it's, uh, it's, um, it's uh, in French, you know, we say you, you clean in front of your own door. So it's a bit the same, you know, you have to basically what you're saying to the others, just do it yourself. Yeah. You have to, you have to walk the talk, right? So I, exactly. I, I, yeah. I agree. I agree. So uh, I, I, cause I think this is actually an interesting point, right? Surrounding the, the procurement technology. So if you don't mind, I, I wanted to dive mm -hmm. a little bit deeper into that. Mm -hmm. So in this requirement, you know, gathering phase procurement, like you said, they know the process, you like the process, right? Um, so of course, you know, buying technology for that process, you know, in a lot of ways should be simpler, right? Do you ever think though, that procurement teams get kind of, how would I say, handcuffed by the process so they're focused more so on digitization rather than digitalization and you know the flexibility of being able to adopt a solution that's actually going to maybe show them a different way of working it's a good question um i'm not really sure to be honest because i think you're right you know sometimes procurements wants to do too much um, you know, in terms of, you know, risk prevention, negotiation, the whole thing where actually a faster and maybe more agile approach would be actually better for the company overall. Um, but in a way, I think, I think it's also the perks of the job, you know, it's, it's, we're, I think we're trying to do this, but it's also, we also need to know where to be actually flexible, where to say, Hey, Sorry, but that process, you know, the whole RFP process, and, and it depends on the company, but it could be seven steps, 11 steps, 13 steps or whatever. Right. This time we have to go quick because, you know, either there is a very good offer on the table that we have to take, or it's something that, you know, unfortunately we can't wait. So because it's for a client, something like that. So I think it's also where, you know, procurement has to be agile enough to say, hey, this time we have to, we have to, we have to, we have to rush, we have to do this. It's not, you know, we don't want to to jeopardize, you know, the spend spend control, the risks, the legal side, but you know, there we can cut some corners if there really, if there is really a need to be. Hmm. Understood. I mean, when it comes to technology, and if we shift away from like talking about procurement technology specifically, you know, to be applied in procurement teams, just technology as a <laughs> as a broader category, um, which is not a small one, right? Um, and I mean, you're you're in projects where I'm sure that you're buying, you know, innovative pr technology, you know, hardware, mm -hmm. software, uh, networks, you know, uh, so so forth and so on. I mean, technology is on an incredible an amazing trajectory, you know, look around us yep. and I mean, look at the stock market, right? I mean, look at the big seven in the United States, you know, businesses like NVIDIA, Microsoft and the like, yep. right? It's, it's obvious tech is king right now. Um, I mean, how as a tech buyer, do you stay ahead of the trends of what's going on in this world? I mean, everything's happening so exponentially. No, no, you're, I mean, you're completely right. And I think, I mean, obviously we don't have a crystal ball where we can see, you know, what's coming. Um, because if we did, I, would, I, would, I, would, I wouldn't be there anymore. But, um, you know, it's, it's, <laughs> I think, you know, the COVID crisis showed this very quickly. And, and I, I, for example, I remember that at Adidas, um, you know, 
one, um, I think it's mid-March 2020, I remember. Uh, but from one day to the other, all of our stores in the world were shut. And it's not like, you know, monies can come back through other way. No, there's no sale happening anywhere in the world. So at that time, you know, the, the, I think it was the CIO at the time said, hey, it's e-commerce, but it's e-commerce now. So he shifted a whole bunch of teams to the e-commerce side because that was the only si sign of revenue we had. And, and to your point, I mean, budgets were going up as well because from one day to, to the others, we needed to have, you know, teams installed to be able to collaborate, to talk to each other. We needed, right. you know, like tools like Figma to be able to, to share ideas, work together, share documents and everything. So I think, you know, I mean, COVID is actually a good is is actually a good example for this. But to your point, I, I don't even know what what the next crisis is going to be. Um, but in a way, I think you know it's it's to be able to be ready for those. And mm. you know the the trends that we see. I mean, of course, you know you can read you can read the news and everything. But as I was saying, those innovations will come through your suppliers. And I think that you know that's that's by um, getting those relationships with the, with your suppliers that you know you can get those innovations through the door. Um, and, and I mean to give you an example, we had recently a discussion with a, a uh, an AI tool uh, provider, um, and they showed us you know their roadmap under NDA, and it's it's crazy what's coming up. Um, and you know we can have this already, and we know this is coming up, and we can already try to prepare with this internally. So you know when it's actually out, we're we're ready. But I mean, I do hope you know there's no new crisis like COVID coming up in the next in the next 10, 20 years, but you never know. You just need to be ready if it comes up. Well, I think that that's also an interesting thing. Is the role of procurement nowadays, whether it's in technology or you know securing goods and and uh, services and or materials, right? Has procurement instead is is it more focused on resilience than anything else, right? Building a resilient for in your case tech stack. I don't think so. I think it's, it's, this is really the role of IT, um, you know, trying to build a, a strong infrastructure. Because if, you know, if, if let's say next week, everyone has to go back to their uh, home office, the infrastructure has to be strong enough. Uh, so I think that's more the role of IT. I think in procurement, we just need to make sure that, you know, in terms of contracts, we're good. But I do also think that, you know, we are the entry point for all of the innovation. And I think mm -hmm. that's, you know, that's where, you know, um, where... IT can be sometimes quite conservative. Um, that's where, you know, we can share with them, you know, all of the white papers, presentations or invitations that, you know, we get extended by suppliers so that, you know, they can be, they can be connected. And, and it's very, I mean, you, you can see it with, you know, all of the, um, and I don't know exactly the names, but, you know, if you go, if you have the Dreamforce, I think Adobe has Adobe Max and CES as yeah. well. I'm not under, entirely sure. Uh, but procurement never gets in, invited in those. You know, we get the invitation for someone else. So you know, that's where you know it's uh, it's it, the innovation comes comes through that door. But we don't, we're not, you know, uh, we're not the owner of these. Okay, that's interesting. Do you think the procurement should be in those playgrounds rather than, for example, that the IT buyer is getting or the IT profile is getting invited in? I mean, I would love to spend a weekend in Vegas. That's for sure. <laughs> uh, but no. But all uh, all jokes aside, I think you know it's uh, all of those discussions can be also quite technical. Which, from per my, my side personally, I don't have the IT expertise to properly mm. understand it. Um, but uh, no, it's a, I think it's 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 really really a question of audience. You know, um, if uh, I, I mean, and I think a lot of you know of all of those software editors, they know that. The real people to convince are the IT people uh, or the or the end users. I think procurement is there to help, but they're, they're not the ones right. that you know will will choose a solution over IT. Well, this is interesting because I'm sure that you you've been in like organizations that were also probably had very nice uh, cultures of you know development and innovation and 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 cultures of learning and development and change, right? Mm -hmm. um, what do you think is the best way to like kind of leverage that in an organization or how if it doesn't exist how how can one help to build it maybe is the better question you you, you mean a culture of 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 development or, or innovation of learning development change yeah exactly i mean like if that's not in an organization how does one start to build that focus i think that's a hard question uh it's um it, it's it is i think 
if if it's not there, um, it's either because it's it is the industry. You know, it's very formalized, very traditional, like, for example, banking can be. Uh, or there is a lot of red tape, uh, like banking can be as well. Yeah. Uh, but pharma is a bit of the same because, you know, there are, there are a lot of innovation on the pharma tech and everything. But we also know that, for example, in Europe with GDPR uh, and coming up CSRD, you know, all of the patient data has to be protected in a way which automatically cuts part of those innovations. So having, you know, bringing up that innovation internally, I think it's really procurement's job. Um, but then it's really up to the organization in itself to be willing to move, which I think it's much, much harder. Um, mm. I've, I've, seen, I've seen a few, um, a few companies where even if you're bringing stuff up, uh, you know, like great innovations, new tools, new processes. Yeah. The teams are actually a bit reluctant to even look into it because they say, hey, you know, it's such a long process to get everything approved and everything that just continue as we are, which, I, which is a shame. I agree. Yeah, very much so. No, and I mean, I think that the, sometimes the, the, the idea of change itself is the very barrier to yeah. it, right? Exactly. Yeah, I think I think it's uh, it's like uh, you know if you've if you've seen this one, but the image where you know everyone wants to change, but when it comes to actually change, there's no one else. Yeah. It's uh, everyone wants to to do the to do the to to be safe. Say hey, we need to change, but when it actually comes up to it, there's no one else. Well, it's obvious that the role of IT and tech buying is very important to be able to drive forward and kind of try and. How would, how would I say facilitate uh, facilitate situations where an organization is going to level up in one way or the other? Whether again it be mm. like in infrastructure or or, or, or software or, or hardware. When do you think is the right time for a company? Like when does a company need IT or tech buying? I would say as soon as they need procurement, um, which is usually <laughs> which is usually earlier than you think. I would say. Okay, um, so let's double click there then. Uh, when do you think procurement should get involved in a buying process of technology? Um, in, in, I mean, in, in a bigger group, I think it, it starts with the budget straight away. So it's very, very early. I'm not sure if it's needed to be that early, um, but it's, it, you know, in much smaller company or maybe companies that are less mature into the procurement process. Uh, I think that we really need to get to get in there where you know the the the, the technical assessment has been done and passed, mm -hmm. uh, and then we're we're moving on to the next step with the contracting negotiations because um, sometime we can see uh, and I can see it in my company now, where people you know out of out of goodwill will say, hey, procurement, here is the contract, we've negotiated everything, it's done, it's ready, we can sign it, and when you actually look into it, say, hey. Mm, there's a few things, legal risks that we need to check, some clauses we need to, to to disregard, maybe negotiate a few things here and there. And so it it's it can happen where procurement can see it as a, a delaying the whole process. Yeah. Um, whereas actually, you know, we just want to prevent the risks that are there. Uh, it's it's as simple as this. But so I think oftentimes, uh, and I, I was saying at the very beginning, you know, procurement is not well understood everywhere yet um so I, I it it can it can be seen this way but i think that as soon as as soon as possible uh procurement should be in there yeah that's a good point so that it's seen as a enabler rather than a, a hinder as well exactly yeah, yeah, yeah. i mean that, that's as a, that's exactly you know my first point is to say hey we need to bring the tools to everyone so it's it's more enablement than just just delaying because let's be very honest if, if procurement was delaying the whole process yeah, they would they would kill the function, and and in your case, tools are legitimate tools, software and hardware and yeah. alike, right? And tech buying and and alike, and and now obviously as a head of procurement, I think that you probably have a little bit of a broader scope in services and 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 alike. I assume, you know, with that being said, it's a very different type of buying. Well, very different, but it's a different type of procurement than it is maybe for material buying, right? Yeah, or material definitely. procurement. Yeah. Working in an organization that's focused on, you know, uh, uh, attaining or, uh, or, or purchasing, you know, raw materials or yeah. or, or components and alike that are going into whatever, uh, you know, um, plastics or packaging, so forth yeah. and so on. No, definitely. Um, how, how do you think that the function of like tech and IT procurement differ from something like a material procurement? And also, is there anything that these disciplines you think can learn from one another? 
Um, I think in in terms of material or I, I, with with tech procurement, I think in a way it's much less traditional because, as you were saying, you know, it moves so fast that mm -hmm. you have you have a new tool or a new trend or a new new anything every every month, every six months, uh, where, where I think that, um, you know, material procurement where you're buying raw materials uh, is, is actually, I think, much more formalized and much more traditional because it touched a lot also on supply chain, which um, when I really started in procurement, um, I remember that some people were still buying CDs. So, you know, we had to physically ship the CD to somewhere. So you had, you know, Inco terms, the whole thing. Now everything is digital. So it's like hey, you, you, is, you don't even need to download anything now. You, know? you just create your account on the, on the SaaS and that's it. So I think, you know, the kind of supply chain is, is a lot more formalized and traditional. And IT moves at a, at a faster pace. Um, and I think we both have, you know, we, we both have our problem and our constraints. Uh, I think, you know, especially again, COVID showed a lot, you know, with the yeah. supply chain routes being, and, you know, the, I think what's the evergreen ship who blocked the, uh, the Suez Canal for a few weeks. I mean, it's, it sent the whole supply chain world into, uh, into, uh, into oblivion. And I remember at, at Adidas, you know, we had containers of shoes blocked. Mm. And it's, the problem is that when it comes to, you know, Christmas and your, and your shops are not filled, then it's a big problem. Whereas in IT, you know, it, it moves much quick, much quicker. And we also need to be more responsive, I would say, on, 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 something, on something like this. And to your final point, when we say, what can we learn? I would say that, and I've never done really material procurement. So this is my, my view might not be completely correct. But I think I know that the relationship building in material procurement is much more important because you do have much less suppliers in this in the space. Yeah. So everyone is actually very important. Um, and when I was thinking about that the other day, um, and maybe you know this, um, but to make a vaccine, one of the key ingredients is is an egg. So Sanofi, who is who has a uh, Pasteur, which is one of the one of the biggest vaccine producers, they buy billions of eggs every year to I manufacture, no yeah, to manufacture their vaccines. So the, the egg buyer at Sanofi is someone extremely important because he buys thousands of hundreds of thousands, even millions of eggs every month to send that to. Um, to the to the facility or to the uh, to in order to to make the vaccine produced. So he must have, and again, you know, eggs are 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 uh, perishable goods. So you need to have good eggs at the right time at the right place. So it's very very important. Yeah. And that relationship with those uh, with those suppliers is extremely important. Where I think in tech, you know, it's much more, it's much quicker. You know, we buy a tool, we use the tool, we switch tool, and it that can be two years, maybe, maybe a bit more in, in some way. So you have, I think, less of that relationship building uh, and, and trust that you can have in more traditional or material procurement, as we're saying. Sorry, it was a very long-winded answer. No, but I think it's an interesting topic. Maybe, maybe because what it also is, an aspect of it here is also the supplier, right? So I'm curious, do you think that suppliers in software space or hardware space you know like you said right we we buy the tech we use it we we sh we, we we switch right a few years mm -hmm. later i think that the life cycle of a technology in a large to enterprise bit or and or enterprise business is something like i think five to seven years or something of that sort right is that's kind mm -hmm. of the life the life cycle i mean what does a what does a so software provider have to do to, to stay around longer than five to seven years or is it even healthy to have a, a software provider for for longer than five to seven years that's interesting interesting topic yeah, it, it is. It is. I think. I think it's. Uh, it, it also depends, you know, on the on the type of, of software that you're buying. I think if it's foundational to your company, like you know the ERP um, or all of the finance HR tools, uh, all of this, it's, it's extremely important for just the structure of the, the of the company. But for us, you know, uh, for example, at Monks, uh, and you know, we have uh, we we're a service company, so our main resources are actually you know our our, our creative people, yeah. but. The main tool we were using, you know, are creative tools, um, and 
and they are moving so fast, uh, especially now with the rise with the rise of AI in the last few few years. Um, but you know, I mean, you might have seen that you know we've signed a big partnership with Adobe uh, on this, and Adobe was for years and years and years, you know, the default solution for creative. Uh, and now with AI, they are making the switch as well because they know that if they don't make the switch, you know, their position will be will be questioned for a lot of companies. So yeah. I think if they want to stay around, they have to ride that wave. Uh, otherwise, you know, you would see like, for example, uh, what uh, Kodak did, you know, when they didn't want to switch to uh, to digital photography, then just went under. Um, yeah. So I think, you know, for, for those, if you want to 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 keep to 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 have a longer relationship, I think you you do need to adapt to 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 the trend, for sure. Yeah, it's a no, it's a great way of it's a great way of looking at it, and it's and it's the responsibility on both sides, right? Um, yeah. to to be able to make sure that that relationship can 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 grow over time. So, w- one thing that I th- I think is I wanted to touch upon before we 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 kind of round things off, when you're buying technology. You mentioned Adobe, right? But mm-hmm. there's hundreds, if not thousands, of competitors out there to Adobe, yeah. and they are popping up every single day. Because the yeah. one thing that we need to remember is tech is king, and there's a lot of cash in the space, and there's yeah. startups popping up left and right every single day in various tech categories. Yeah. When is it the right time, in your opinion, to buy from a, a tech startup? And then also, adversely, when's the wrong time to do it? I don't think there is there is a right time or a wrong time. Um, I think there there is, as you said, you know, new startups are popping up every week, um, and 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 I've seen that in the, with with some of our suppliers. Sometimes you when you have calls with them, it's like two guys in an office with a great product, and and that's it. You know, it's it's they have no accounting, they have no HR, they have nothing, but they have a great product. Mm. And I think, you know, it's, it's also the role of procurement to say, hey, that's where, you know, there is, there is a possibility here. Um, and it's just, again, you know, it's risk prevention is say, hey, you know, we, we can try this tool. It's not a problem. We're there to facilitate that. We, that we're there to make sure that, you know, that contract protects both parties in case, you know, there is an issue. Yeah. Um, but I don't think it's a good way of doing business if we have to say hey you know we cannot buy uh from startups which are less than two years old i don't think this that's not how you ride the wave of innovation and 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 for example i mean we we have a partnership with a company called runway i don't know if you if you know this it's a text to video software it's extremely powerful what they do and when we started discussion with them it it was yeah i think it was two or three guys in new york and you know they didn't know how to how to write a contract, uh, present an offer, and I think we've we've been in in a in a in a relationship it for maybe a year now, and I think their commercial model has changed like two or three times already. And you know it's fine. You know it's up to us to just say hey, you know let, let's switch the contract and make sure you know we 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 it, it works and everything. So no, I don't think there there is there is a there is a, a right or wrong way. I think again, as you to just to reflect back to your point before, is how willing is the company to change and to yeah. adapt to those innovations? Because if they are, then they will jump on any innovation they found. And that's what I found extremely interesting with monks is that those guys, they will jump on any innovation. They will try every product under the sun just to see if, hey, could be interesting. Let's, let's dive deeper into this. Mm. And it's a culture that's very inspiring. And I'm happy that you were able to share some of those takes from 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 your experience in the business you're in today and and your your career it's been a, a great episode and learning a little bit more from me as well for you know the other side of that coin of of technology yep. buying so really appreciate it i'd love to round things off but first before we let you go a quick fire round which we yep. do with all of our guests if that's okay sure. um one word or one sentence answers a few quick questions about constantine the person rather than the procurement pro sound like a plan sure yep Awesome. Go Let's get into it. So Fire all away. expenses trip paid tomorrow. You can go by yourself. You can take your family. It's up to you. Where are you heading? Iceland. Okay. Uh, yeah. The lagoons then, or is there anything else particular everything. There that you want to see? Uh, volcanoes, the mountains, the greens, uh, the the ice, everything. It's uh, It's been on the list for a while. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. Speaking of lists, do you have any books or podcasts that are on your lists of things that you would like suggest to somebody, professional or not professional, one or the other? 
Um, I think, I mean, for me, I, I listen to a lot of uh, history podcasts, but mostly in French, so it <laughs> might, not okay. be good. might not be good for, for, for the audience. The English-speaking audience, yeah, understood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, and, and in, in terms of books, uh, yeah, to be, to be very transparent with you, I've, uh, I've bought the integral of Sherlock Holmes. I've never read those, so I'll, uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll dig into it uh, in, in, the next, in the next few weeks. Very nice, very nice. If you weren't going to work in procurement, what's one thing that you could see yourself working with? Very good question. Um, I think I would, I would work with my hands. Um, if it makes sense, um, maybe furniture, okay. building furniture. Very exciting. And on the opposite of something very material with working your hands and, and, and furniture, let's go back to tech really quickly. Mm -hmm. What do you think is the next biggest trend in technology? And it's allowed to be AI, but you can't just say AI. Um, I don't think it will be AI um, because AI is already there. So I think it will, it will continue to develop, but that will not be the next thing. Um, I'm, I have a feeling that it's going to be something linked with crypto something around there uh and and i know that you know that kind of nft thing a few years ago kind of crashed and burned but the concept of it is extremely interesting um on the on the nft concept and even for the metaverse with say crash and burn i think there is a lot of potential for education for you know official documents and everything so i think and we're not there yet but i think there will be something in the next in the next few years coming from that and I, again, could be completely wrong. <laughs> well, uh, hey, that's my uh, bet. Well, uh, like I typically say, you know, uh, I, I don't care what you have a, an opinion, it, it, what your opinion is, as long as you have one, right? So yep. thank you for sharing your opinion with us today. And I'm looking forward to the future as well. Yep. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on today's episode, Constantine. If people want to get in touch with you or, you know, uh, speak with you, be a part of your network, what's the best way to do so? Uh, LinkedIn. Just find me on LinkedIn uh, and, and add me with a message and, and I'll be happy to discuss with you. Fantastic. Thank you, Constantine, for taking the time today. We were happy to have Thank you Thank you, Sam. Thank you for having me.